no, I'm not wearing this shirt because John Cena's in the main event. I'm wearing this shirt because it's bright orange and Donald Trump is in this one again. <laughs> So off. This is Freddy Krueger saying hi! Hey, welcome back to WrestleMania Wednesday. I'm your host, Don, and today we're going to be talking about WrestleMania 23, which took place on April 1st, 2007. No joke. Uh, at the Pontiac Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, which is where WrestleMania 3 was, which is an absolutely great, perhaps the greatest WrestleMania of all time. This one is not. This one, I don't want to call it a dud. Because there are a few, two or three, exceptional matches, but everything else is just crap. I kind of don't even want to go through these one by one because I know at some point we're going to have to talk about Donald Trump. He's back in his biggest role yet, which means his worst role yet. But let's just, let's just get through it as quickly as possible. It opened with Aretha Franklin singing America the Beautiful. Finally! Finally we get a song again. Aretha Franklin. She's pretty great. She's like a thousand years old, but she's still pretty great. This one opens with a bang with the third Money in the Bank ladder match. And it's a really good one. We've got Jeff Hardy, Booker T, Fit Finley, CM Punk making his WrestleMania debut. I should be wearing a CM Punk shirt. I do have a bright yellow one, which also looks like Donald Trump's complexion. Matt Hardy, Mr. Kennedy, Randy Orton, and Edge. That's a hell of a lineup. I wrote down in my notes. Off the hook. I mean, like, literally, the winner, Mr. Kennedy, he takes the briefcase off of a hook. So this match technically was off the hook. Uh, this match was great. Yeah, Mr. Kennedy won, which is weird. Out of all these, except for maybe Fit Finley, does anybody even remember Mr. Kennedy? He's a pretty solid wrestler. I don't want to downplay him, but still, I was surprised to see him win. This match had the best moment of the night, and by best, I mean, like, most memorable. They had, like, the ladders... There was a ladder parallel to the, the ring apron and one of the guardrails. And Jeff Hardy climbed the top of one ladder in the ring and then jumped onto Edge, who was lying on the other ladder, broke the ladder in half, and they both were taken out in stretchers. I don't know if that was legit or just part of the show, but it looked pretty brutal. And uh, props to them. So then... That amazing match was followed up by the great Kali versus Kane. As bad a match as I've ever seen. Boy, that was... I mean, they weren't in bras and panties, but... Boy, that was boring. Just Kali's out of his league. Kane uh, does a valiant effort to make it watchable. Kane is a great wrestler. But, boy, this one was just dumb and boring. And the great Kali won, which is a shame. Next up is for the U.S championship. MVP, who I think was making his WrestleMania debut, versus Chris Benoit, the defending champion. Chris Benoit wins. This is a really short match, but it's pretty solid. Both of these are really good wrestlers. It's not exceptional. I don't think they're given that much time, but it was okay. It was okay. Next up is the Hall of Fame class of 2007. Uh, we've got Mr. Fuji, Jim Ross, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, Dusty Rhodes, Jerry Lawler, Nick Bockwinkle, Afa and Sika, the Wild Samoans, and the original Sheik. That's a solid, that's a solid crew right there. All, all deserving of it. But those are all Hall of Famers that you can stand behind. Then we've got the World Heavyweight Championship. It's The Undertaker versus Champion Batista. Awesome. <laughs> Match of the night for me. As I said a couple WrestleManias ago, moving forward, every Undertaker match is great to phenomenal, in my opinion. This one is phenomenal. This is as good as any Undertaker WrestleMania match ever. I put it up there with the Shawn Michaels matches, which might be sacrilege to some people. But this one is just... It's just so much fun. It was uh, it's just violent and... Uh, uh, crazy. They they fight out of the ring. They fight in the ring. There's just, just I, I really, it's just you expect Shawn Michaels and Undertaker to have an amazing match. I don't think anybody at the time expected this level of 
wrestling from Batista. And and a lot of it was held because that's how good The Undertaker is. He makes everybody look better. But Batista held his own, and Batista even made The Undertaker look better. I just thought this was an awesome match. Um, I loved it. It was great fun. Undertaker won and became the new champion, and he's now 15-0. and 0. The streak, is it's the most amazing, unparalleled, incredible feat in the history of sports entertainment. That's what they keep saying. I don't know. It's certainly fun to watch. Then we have the ECW Originals. Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Rob Van Dam, and Sabu versus a bunch of people. I don't remember. Um, uh, one of whom was Matt Stryker making his WrestleMania debut. Is that noteworthy? I wrote it in my notes. I kind of like Matt Stryker. The, uh, Rob Van Dam's team won. This match was lame. Next up uh, is the Battle of the Billionaires. It's Donald Trump versus Vince McMahon. Don't get too excited. They don't actually wrestle. They have uh, their surrogates wrestle for them. Trump has Bobby Lashley wrestle, representing him. And Vince McMahon has Umaga wrestle, representing him. So it was really pointless. The loser gets his head shaved by the winner. Not Umaga or uh, Bobby Lashley, both of whom may in fact be bald. But uh, so Bobby Lashley wins, and then Donald Trump gets to shave Vince McMahon's head. And just for the record, I don't care for Donald Trump. I didn't back in 2007. I didn't back in the 90s. I don't think I've ever cared for Donald Trump. He always seemed like a despicable, degenerate piece of shit. And the fact that he is the front runner for the GOP nomination is very fitting. There are some people who are shocked by it. I'm not shocked by it. I'm not shocked by it at all. Uh, it's, that's, that's poetic justice. Anyway, that match sucked. Moving into another match that sucked. Uh, the women's title. Melina, champion, defending against Ashley in a lumberjack match. This match was like three minutes long. Uh, they brought out a bunch of really great female wrestlers to be the lumberjacks, who are the people who surround the ring in case one of the wrestlers gets thrown out. They beat them up and then throw them back in. Uh, and all of the lumberjacks were better than the, the two women in the ring. Uh, the match was like a minute. To, it was like three minutes long. It was boring, and it was lame. And then finally, we've got the main event for the WWE Championship. It's champion John Cena. What is, what is this thing? He goes, you can't see me. And then he does the Batusi. Awesome match. Mr. WrestleMania is back. It's been a while since we've really seen Shawn Michaels have a great match. Just two of my favorites having a great match. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, check it out. It was awesome. John Cena wins and retains the championship. Uh, last year he beat Triple H, right? This year he beat Shawn Michaels. This is the point where John Cena becomes the man and is just pushed into the heavens by the WWE. And he becomes the face that runs the place. Is that what they call him? He becomes the face of the company. Um, and the face on my shirt. I, uh, the face on Wheaties boxes. This is where John Cena arguably becomes the most well-known and famous uh, professional wrestler since Stone Cold. If Jester, Jester has heard of John Cena, my, my friend and co-host, co-host for every video that isn't wrestling related. She's also heard of The Undertaker because I talk about The Undertaker, but she has heard of John Cena. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's an internet meme. John Cena is the man. Everybody knows John Cena. Main event was an awesome match. Undertaker, Batista, great match. The opening ladder match, great match. So great, it was worth watching this WrestleMania just for those three. But skip everything else. Uh, skip uh, everything else. And please don't vote for Donald Trump. I don't like to get political. I, I'm not a political man. But this isn't a political issue. This is a humanitarian issue. He's a despicable, disgusting human being. And if you support him, or if you believe he'll be good for the country, or if you believe a lot of the things he says, you're probably an idiot. 
I guess what I would say, I don't even know if that's fair. You're not an idiot, but you certainly, you can't see the, the truth. You can't handle the truth. Is that what John Cena says? In the words of John Cena, um, I feel the need. In the words of John Cena, she's lost that loving feeling. And then he sings that song with Goose. What is happening? What is happening? What am I talking about? I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about Tom Cruise. <sighs> anyway, bye. Uh, see you next Wednesday. That's my catchphrase.